topic for the night here is electrophilic aromatic substitution. But again, this is a big topic, especially if you're taking the DAT. Taking the DAT, you're going to see you know two to four of these on your exam, almost guaranteed. So, and again, we've got to look at two major principles. One is just the reactions that you can do. So, but then the other thing, if you recall, like the ortho para directors and lead directors. But again, this is one of the OCHEM two concepts that's really important, pretty heavily tested on. So, again, more often than not, it's your OCHEM one knowledge you're going to rely on. This is an exception, though. This is an important concept, even though it's from OCHEM two. substitution, and I'll probably refer to it as EAS from here on out. So electrophilic aromatic substitution, you're pretty much going to see these reactions in the context of benzene. Yeah, other aromatic compounds can do them, so for the context of what you need to know for the MCAT or the DAC, just worry about benzene. So if we look at what's going on here, it's electrophilic. So if we recall the reactions we learned with alkenes were electrophilic addition reactions. They weren't substitutions, they were additions. Let's look at the difference here real quick. So if we look at we look at this reaction right here. So what happens? What's the net result here? Each side gets a bromine added to it. So it's an addition reaction because pi bond's gone, and both carbons had a substituent added to them. So let's look at the difference when we have an aromatic compound, though. So if I add Br2 now to my benzene, what's going to happen? So it turns out nothing. Benzene won't react with Br2 all by itself. Why not? Why is the alkene able to act as a nucleophile with bromine and benzene not? Benzene is more stable. Yeah, benzene is just way more stable. Being way more stable, it's a much weaker nucleophile. Being a much, much weaker nucleophile, it won't react with Br2. Br2 is not a good enough electrophile, even though it's pretty good. It's not good enough to react with benzene because benzene sucks at being a nucleophile. So the first thing is the normal reactions aren't going to apply. So it turns out we have to add a catalyst to see if you can get this reaction to go. And in this case, it's a Lewis acid catalyst. So your Lewis acid catalysts typically involve a metal ion with a plus 3 charge. So the typical ones you'll see are FeBr3. You might also see FeCl3 or AlCl3. Those are by far the most common, and on paper, they look pretty interchangeable. More common than not, you'll see Br2 paired up with FeBr3, but no reason I couldn't have put FeCl3 or AlCl3 there instead. It would make no difference on the reaction. A lot of students think, like, oh, well, if you're using bromine, you should use bromine in the catalyst, too. No, it doesn't work that way. No need required for that, especially on paper. OK. So once I add the Lewis acid catalyst, things are going to be a little bit different here. So instead of adding two bromines and having a double bond gone, we'll find that our product will only have one bromine added. And I use the word added, but it's not really an addition. That bromine actually replaced something. What did the bromine actually replace? A hydrogen. So this carbon used to have a hydrogen. It's now been substituted by a bromine. So we'll see this reaction is just a little bit different than the one we're used to seeing. So let's look at the mechanism for electrophilic aromatic substitution. So it 
turns out when you mix BR2 and FeBr3, depending on which textbook you consult, but it ends up forming in the solution the equivalent of like a bromine cation. And depending on the textbook you use, some might just show simply a bromine cation, some might show a complex between the BR2 and the FeBr3. Doesn't matter, don't care. Not the point here. So, but we do have some really good electrophile, and most of your really good electrophiles have a positive charge. They're very electron poor. And now benzene says, well, I couldn't react with BR2, but BR plus, I can do that. And so benzene's going to come, and it's at BR plus. And the bromine will get attached to one side or the other, where that pi bond we use in our structure. And the other side gets nothing and is a carbocation. It only has three bonds. It's a hydrogen on that carbon that's not drawn in. We usually draw this hydrogen in because it's about to get pulled off. So if you look, so why don't, why doesn't this reaction, it definitely doesn't go this pathway, but why doesn't this reaction maybe just, you know, add another bromine right there? So maybe give that instead of this product here. What's the advantage to going this route? It's, it's, aromatic. Aromatic. it's aromatic. Again, your product here is aromatic. Your product here wouldn't be aromatic. This is why we don't do an addition reaction with benzenes, with aromatic compounds, because you'd lose the stability of being aromatic if you did an addition reaction. And so instead, they go by substitution. You stick the bromine on. But instead of adding another group here, we're just going to deprotonate this hydrogen. And we're done. And so that's exactly what we're going to do here. So a base from the solution will come and deprotonate. To give us our product. So it's really just two steps. Nucleophile attacks the electrophile, and then we deprotonate. So attack and deprotonate. Done. So this reaction usually looks a little more complicated, though. So because why? Yeah, I haven't drawn all the resonance structures of my intermediate here. This thing's going to have a couple of resonance structures here. wanted to show the resonance after the fact, just to show you, they don't want it to be lost on you how simple this mechanism really is. Just two steps. Again, attack the electrophile and deprotonate, and you're done. So this carbocation intermediate has a special name. You often hear it referred to as the sigma complex. So would you describe this intermediate as being electron rich or electron poor? Poor. It's electron poor. It does not have enough electrons. It's a carbocation. So it's electron poor. How do you stabilize something that is electron poor? Give it electrons. So in, in this case, for EAS, we talk about electron <coughs> donating groups, or electron donors, as stabilizing our intermediate. And if we stabilize the intermediate, we'll have a lower activation energy leading to it. The reaction goes faster. And so in the context of EAS reaction, electron donating groups are activating groups. They make benzene react faster. Whereas, we'll see, what if I put an electron withdrawing group on my benzene instead? Well, an electron withdrawing group, well, this electron poor guy really doesn't want to see that. So he already doesn't have enough electrons. If you put a withdrawing